These are the six exercises I use to build strength and measure long-term training progress. There are people who have trained productively for years only using these exercises and their close variations. If you get stronger at these movements, you are guaranteed to get stronger at every other exercise in existence. No matter how long I train or how many new things I try, I always find myself coming back to these exercises over and over again. They're a great way to reality check if you've truly gotten bigger and stronger over time, because if your gains aren't reflected in your performance in these movements, then there might not be any gains. I'm sorry. Now let's go through each of these movements more in depth. The squat builds useful lower body strength and mass like no other exercise. It can be loaded almost as heavy as the deadlift, but with more range of motion and an eccentric component because you have to control your way down unlike on the deadlift. You will build your quads, glutes, hamstrings, abs and spinal erectors, which comprise most of the muscle mass in your entire body. The low bar squat uses the most weight and involves the most muscle mass, but there are a lot of different variations you can do for the squat. Some examples are pause squat, pin squat, high bar squat and front squat. Hack squats and leg presses can work, but since they're machines, they don't challenge your stability to the same extent as free weights do. So they're not quite as good for total body strength development. If squat is the king of lower body mass builders, then deadlift is the king of total body mass builders. While it might not be the best exercise at developing many of the following muscle groups, it uses all of them to a considerable extent. Hamstrings, glutes, quads, spinal erectors, abs, traps, lats and forearms. If there was one single way to measure total body strength, it would be the deadlift. Some variations include pause deadlift, deficit deadlift, rack pull, stiff leg deadlift and Romanian deadlift. Weighted back extensions can work as well as a sort of light day variation. Now for the upper body. The bench press is vital for building your chest, though it also considerably works the triceps and anterior deltoids. It is also a total body exercise when performed correctly. Your legs, core and back are all required to contract extremely hard to achieve a proper and rigid setup. What makes the bench press special is that no other upper body exercise comes close to it in terms of how much sheer load you can use. For variations, you can for instance move your feet up, use pauses, pins, various grips and different angles of incline. Dumbbells and push-ups also work as easy variations. Machines can also be fine, though they don't require stabilization from your arms and shoulders like free weights do, and thus don't develop all the little muscles around your shoulder to the same extent. Though the bench is the king of upper body in terms of total loading, what makes the overhead press special is that it has the longest kinetic chain out of any exercise, which refers to the total distance force is transmitted through your body. It starts at your feet on the ground and ends at the bar. Thus, it's impossible to have a longer kinetic chain than what is achieved at the lockout position of the overhead press. This really challenges your stability and balance and thus works your total body musculature extremely hard. Primarily, the overhead press works your upper chest, anterior deltoids, lateral deltoids, triceps and abs. Some useful variations are pin presses at different heights, push press, standing dumbbell press and seated variations with a barbell, dumbbells or different machines. However, the seated exercises eliminate much of the full body component if you choose a variation where your back is supported against the surface. Now, even though the deadlift does work your back musculature to a considerable extent, it does leave quite a bit to be desired, because it's only an isometric contraction for the lats and a loaded stretch for the traps. This is where barbell rows and pull-ups come to play, because they are the two heaviest ways to load the entirety of your back musculature under range of motion. Out of these two, pull-ups use more of your lats and biceps, while barbell rows use more of your traps, spinal erectors, rhomboids and rear delts, though they also hit your lats and biceps considerably. Pull-up variations include the use of different grips and bands, pull-down with different handles and various machines. Row variations also include the use of different grips as well as exercises like the seated cable row, seal row, chest supported row, dumbbell row and machines. The reason machines and supported variations are especially useful for the back in my opinion is that the deadlift and the other lifts combined already make your entire body stronger. They just leave your back a little underworked and that work can be achieved in many ways. Now here are some practical suggestions for programming these lifts into your training. First, you can simply pick one out of the lower body exercises, one out of the pressing exercises and one out of the pulling exercises for every session. You can easily design an AB type of program in this way, for example squat, bench and row in session A and deadlift, overhead press and pull up in session B, and you can alternate those working out every other day. If you want to work out four times per week, you can do two A sessions and two B sessions. The first A and B sessions can be the main lifts, and the second sessions can be variations or just the main lifts using different rep ranges. Another option is to start every session with one or two of these lifts and then do easier variations like dumbbells or machines or completely different exercises for the rest of the workout. Play around with these or just do the basics. Either will work and get you results. Now go get stronger. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.
because if your gains aren't reflected in your performance of these, they're a great way to reality check if you've truly gotten bigger and stronger over time. Because if you're... Now let's go through... So they're not quite as good for total body strength development. So they don't quite develop the little muscles around your shoulder to quite the same.